Hi, everybody. This is Tom Broussard. It is June 1st, the first of this day of this summer. Um, it is also the first day of aphasia month, aphasia awareness month. So it's a big, big uh, month for us. A lot of work to do uh, when I say a big month for us with people with stroke and aphasia, uh, given that so few people know anything about uh, aphasia. Um, we do the best we can all year long, but especially in June for aphasia month to help people learn more about it, be educated more about how the brain works. So that's what we're doing this month. So I'm looking forward to it. And I wrote this article uh, you, will have, you will see soon called Aphasia Awareness, uh, Motivation and the Little Engine That Could. That's it the little engine that could. And this is one of the original ones, um, written in 1930. Um, really quite something, and we're gonna talk about that. Um, also, I mentioned that I have to make sure I have used different ties, otherwise you think I'm wearing the same clothes every single day, uh, which most of the time I am. Uh, but now here it is in Maine. I brought this for you, see this, huh? Right there. So, um, now I won't show this for a year since I have about 50 ties to get through <laughs> before we, before I use that tie again. Um, but I do appreciate everybody coming to uh, see my video this month. Um, the little engine that could is always a big, big story for all of us, right? When we were kids, all of us. Uh, it's all about motivation. It's all about optimism. It's all about hard work. Um, when we were kids, um, there was a lot of hard work. Most of it we didn't want to have to do. Uh, didn't realize till later that that helped us uh, become the 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 uh, habitual, useful uh, habits that we had uh, started when we were young to become who we are today. And the little engine that could is really a great little motivational story. And I wrote this just for um, people with stroke and aphasia. Um, I've said this many, many times. Uh, when you have a stroke and aphasia, uh, depending on the severity and where it is in your brain, uh, how it's going to work for you is completely different for every single person um, all the time. Uh, it's, it is terrible all the time. And, uh, but as we all start to survive uh, and live through stroke and aphasia, some of us getting better than others, for sure. Um, we're still trying to provide everybody with stroke and aphasia, never mind all the healthy people who will hopefully will never get it, uh, help them still understand how the brain really does work. Uh, because when we talk about rewiring our brain, and regaining our lang language, uh, that entire capacity is a capacity that all he healthy people have already. They just really don't know that they have that capacity um, uh, called plasticity. So um, that is all part and parcel of what we're talking about this month uh, with this uh, lead off with the little engine that could. And in my particular case, uh, as you have seen, I've been writing lots and lots of articles with metaphors that help people better understand how the brain works using uh, language that people can understand. Um, if you're a scientist or even an SLP, um, that's a whole new lexicon for people like that. Uh, they learn that over time. It's good that they do that so they can better explain it to us uh, and our family. Uh, but part of us re-explaining it back to everybody else from the perspective of like me and others who had their stroke and aphasia, lost their language and got it back, then we have to re-explain it. But I can't use, we can't use scientific lingo. Uh, we can sort of figure that out, but why should we? We need to show it to you how it works from our perspective. And that's where all these metaphors come as a result. Uh, because now we can better understand um, how we do get better using these various uh, metaphorical stories that we are now using. Um, so 
that's all part of this. Uh, I know that people can't always be as good as you would like to be or as better as you would like to be, uh, depending on severity. But as much as we do, we're still trying to provide the motivational stories um, and metaphorical stories that can help people better understand how the brain really does work. In my particular case, as you know, I had my stroke, my first stroke in September of 2011. Um, in Thanksgiving that year, that was November, I left uh, our place in Boston and went to see my family in Philly. Um, uh, other than my wife and kids, I hadn't seen anybody else, hardly anybody else, never mind the rest of my extended family. And I was more than a little nervous. Uh, and I, of course, I found out later that they were wicked nervous too. It's the first time they had seen anybody with stroke and this thing called aphasia, which none of us knew at the time. Um, I, I would say that most of my family now knows an awful lot about stroke and aphasia based on the last 10 years of work uh, helping people with the wider public understand about how the, how the brain really does work. So, um, but I went there that Thanksgiving. Um, I didn't talk much. I don't remember what was said. I really didn't. Um, uh, and uh, one of my uh, nephews said that I was had big eyes. I was looking all around. I wasn't talking. So you can only imagine. I can only imagine. Um, even today, if I'm having issues, I'll end up saying, sorry, I'm going to stop talking now. Uh, back then, I didn't even say those words. I couldn't have said them. I just stopped talking. Um, so uh, that was an interesting time. But it was still fun to see everybody, as far as I can tell. And uh, we all left there. And obviously, over the years going forward, I got better um, with that first uh, uh, Thanksgiving uh, dinner with everybody. Um, but uh, we just moved back to Maine, coming from Florida. And while we were unpacking here, I came across uh, this book, gave, gave it to you before. And I really didn't know where it came from. Um, I didn't know it at the time because I have lots and lots of books here and I assumed that I bought it or somebody else did or gave it to me. I really had no idea. And I didn't know how long ago that I've had it because I hadn't read it recently um, uh, uh, since my stroke. Uh, I couldn't read there for a long time and then eventually I could, but I didn't read things like this, not that I was aware of. Um, so as I was working on a, a variety of metaphorical stories, I really thought that the little engine that could would be another great little uh, story to tell about how it works with, with uh, uh, people with stroke and aphasia. Uh, because the, the uh, uh, recovering one's uh, language does take, not unlike the little engine, does take an awful lot of, of work, as it were, of persistent, repetitive um, language activities every single day, basically climbing that mountain every single day. And just like the little engine that could, always saying, I think I can, I think I can. I mean, if ever there was a meme in our lives, I think I can, I think I can, I can, is what the little engine had said and what we have all read when we were kids. And then of course it comes down the other side of the mountain and says, I thought I could, I thought I could. Um, so that let me think uh, to write another article about uh, uh, the I think I can thought uh, and how uh, that is seriously more than half the battle when it comes to uh, uh, recovery from any number of diseases and issues you have to work on, a huge component of that, of course, is the state of mind, is your motivation. And when it comes to aphasia, the five rules that you will end up hearing, if you haven't heard it before, from the speech language pathology is, those five rules are motivation, practice, 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 more practice. Um, that's what they will tell you to this day. There's no silver bullet. There's no pill. Uh, the uh, motivation and practice. And 
to the degree that it's difficult to be motivated when you've lost your language and you're depressed and you just can't figure this thing out. Um, it turns out that there are some things that can be motivated um, without really knowing that you're A, necessarily motivated, or B, understand that there's messages to be read in any number of, of, um, of uh, mottos and, and, and messages in books, from people, from movies, from, from songs uh, that can continue to provide you with more of the motive um, of consideration, more motivation based on all of these different activities. And again, I continue to point at the little engine that could because we're gonna to get to the end of the story here and how this really did happen with me, uh, more of a, of a uh, full circle of what I had come to understand. Um, but the, the brain has, again, not unlike the little engine, has incredible power. Um, if you can only imagine that the little engine that could, I think I can, I think I can, there were lots of other engines who apparently had more muscle <laughs> than the little engine and they wouldn't do it for whatever reason. You know, I'm too busy. You know, I'm getting my hair done, whatever it might've been. Uh, the little engine did it because he thought, you know, these people need help and uh, somebody should help them. So I'm going to help them as best that that little thing could do. The little engine could do. Um, and the same thing happens with us who may or may not be motivated at the time that we have our stroke and aphasia. Um, it still comes time <coughs> that you've probably had to help other people in your life. You've been motivated to help other people in your life. And now it's you who now have to be motivated enough for you yourself to move forward and do the activities that, as it turns out, induce, that word is always important, induce plasticity, which then converts uh, language activity, thought, cognitive activities into neuro matter, into brain matter. And it starts to grow new brain matter so that you are now able to speak when you couldn't speak before. That is how the brain really does work. Um, so, that is why all of us uh, with stroke and aphasia are trying to do in, is to provide other people who are not yet ready or haven't had the capacity to start uh, consider the, the need that they need to be motivated to, to get better. And in my particular case, like I say, I found my way up in Maine, had this little book. I didn't know where it came from. And of course, I read it again, but I'm sure it was 40, 50 years since they'd been read to me by other people. Maybe I've read it along the way. What I didn't know was that um, I opened this book and I saw there's an inscription, which a lot of people do get inscriptions. I get it from my mom and dad all the time. But this one says, Thanksgiving 2011 to Uncle Tom. Keep on chugging. Love, Mike Co. I had no idea. Thanksgiving 2011, that's the year, two months after my stroke, that I was there. I say all alone, obviously all my family around me, but I was still alone on the inside because I knew I couldn't speak. For whatever reason, Mike came to the event, brought this book, signed it, gave it to me. I had no idea that he gave it to me, never mind that he had signed it. I had no idea. Um, and it wasn't until just a couple months ago when I found out that he had given me this this uh, message in a bottle, basically. I had no idea that he was basically telling me, keep on chugging, just like the little engine that could, uh, to be motivated enough to climb the aphasia mountain going forward uh, without yet even knowing what it would take, uh, what the activities would be, uh, but to keep on doing whatever uh, was required as the speech language pathology had, had told me. And as my habit started to uh, start chugging and saying, okay, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. And just like the little engine that could, when he got over the mountain, he got to the other side and they said, I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could. 
for all of you who are listening here today. Thank you very much. It is aphasia month. It is very important for everybody to understand how the brain really does work, whether you're healthy or not. Because if you're learning something, you're using plasticity. If you have aphasia and you're getting your language back, you're using plasticity. You're using the same tools that we all have and we all have to learn how that works so we can all use those tools when we want to learn something, again, whether you're damaged or not. Thank you very much to everybody. I really do appreciate it. It's the first day of June, the first day of aphasia month, and I will be on TV quite a bit for the next month and look for you again in July. Have a good summer and talk to you soon. Take care of yourselves. See you later. Bye-bye.